My name is Omi Preheim. A lot of people ask me about Omi, that's short for Naomi. So um, we're in Billings, Montana. I uh, am a farm girl, but uh, spent a lot of time in the big city and now I'm in big sky country. Um, love to connect people. Community has always been very important to me. Kansas farm girl, large extended families, but that's not the only piece of it. There's also, you go to other places and, and college and work in the big city. Wherever you are, you need to have a home. Home for me is where the heart is, but what makes your heart there? It's whether or not you feel like you connect, that you're held, that you have a web around you, a nice basket to rest in when you need to, people to reach to, people to talk with and share your life with. Certainly that's family for me, very strong family, but it's also friends, and then it's that wider group. To leave a large network of people in a wonderful environment in Boston to move to Montana, um, it felt like it was the right time for the move and got here. And I'm a fairly uh, gregarious person. Private too, and believe it or not, quite shy. But it's fairly easy to talk to people, and I was just, uh, I had a toothache. I went to see my uh, a dentist, met him for the first time, talking about what I'm doing here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, I know a woman you need to meet. Let me give you her name and number. I think she's getting a group of women together, and there you go. So it was from that original um, toothache. It just seems to work in my life like that. Maybe it's that I've kind of got a, a, a bee uh, tracking instinct for finding it, but that's, that gives me a lot of joy. And then to not only for myself connect with people, but connect other people to people, and it's, it makes life richer, but it strikes me that this is what makes life rich, rewarding, fun. And I figure, uh, I'm getting to a certain age, as you can tell from the color of my hair, that when I get to the end of this, what's really going to matter for me is the connections I've made, whether or not I've touched people's hearts, if my children still want to talk to me, you know, things like that. Well, it's a, my, my business ends up being probably a change coach, consultant, teacher, um, guide, mentor. I do a lot of, as I said, non-traditional things. So aside from the business and the academic background, I've also added a lot of metaphysical. And that to me is a fascination. Um, so I use metaphysical tools, by that I mean things like uh, numerology, astrology, um, I had a huge feng shui practice in Boston, uh, was teaching practitioners. Um, so I come from a long line of um, spiritual healers, which I didn't discover until my father, who was a, a doctor, um, was leaving. But that was intriguing to me because then I began to understand something about being able to sense and understand not only people, what their needs might be, what, um, how can I connect with them? There's something that happens in that, but also actually how we live in our environments. So I have some architectural background and some real estate background, and you put all these unbelievably disparate pieces together and you get, I can talk with most anybody. I think that a lot of life is to learn how to be balanced. Surf the waves of change, know which way to bend when you're on an immense roller coaster so you don't get sick. Um, so we're using these other tools in ways that people can understand as practical and useful for helping them embrace what we all have to face, and that is tremendous change. We're completely in it. Everybody wants pretty much the same things. They want to live comfortably, securely. They want a safe place for their children. They want to enjoy the, some of the good things in life enough. Um, and they want to have a modicum of contentment and peace without too much strife. 
And that's been true whether I've been in Thailand or Scandinavia or Israel. Um, it's true all over the world. Spaces that we can walk into that feel wonderful and spaces you want to leave immediately. And people are like that too. You can be walking down the street and be 50 yards from somebody and take a left turn or right turn or whatever. You don't want to cross that person. Um, and I believe that that's possible to shift. So it's possible to shift environments that aren't very friendly and work them and make them into spaces where we can feel very comfortable with nature and with each other. Um, and I believe the same is true with people, even difficult ones. As a matter of fact, I think we learn the most from the difficult ones. The uh, growth opportunities that we're given, the challenges. Um, sometimes a really good enemy is your best route to understanding what you need to do. We always stay students our whole lives, but at some point you start sharing what you've learned. That's the whole reason to learn it, I think. So, I became a teacher more than anything. And then it was a coach, and then it was, and now I'm, I have a, um, a number of people who just want mentoring. They want to talk about what's going on in their lives and how to work with that given whatever tools are useful to figure it out. I would love it if the question that people asked was not, what should I do for work? You know, I don't think it's about working harder. I think it's about being finding out who you are inside and then doing what you love. Um, I believe that if everyone felt that way, or something along that line, I'm not trying to turn into some sort of evangelical, but about that issue. Um, however, if people would understand and work from that place of let's each of us take our special gifts and talents and do them so that it doesn't even feel like work anymore, it feels like play. Um, we'd have a lot less stress and a lot less dissatisfaction. Um, people feeling like they're giving all of their life energy to something that doesn't really mean anything to them. But they have to bring home the paycheck because da 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 da. Mm. I think that we've got an amazing array of people with different talents. So how about if we use the ones that are ours? There was a wonderful book I read in my 30s that talked about if you can pick up the best, the gift your father gave you and the gift your mother gave you, the, the best of both, that's what you're meant to be. And my dad was a doctor and my mother was an amazing teacher. So I guess I've taken those two things and done my own dance with them. Whatever I can share that's helpful, great. I want to empower people to use their own gifts and talents. Um, I'm not about turning people into, you know, you have to come see me all the time. It's like, if oh boy, if we can get you roaring down the road, go girl, go guy. Um, so I guess it's a bridge because I'm also at that space of recognizing that I've been very lucky, I've been very fortunate, but uh, who knows how, how much further I'll go. I just hope that um, I hope that I've been able to touch people's hearts. If there's a wonderful saying that is one of my favorites, let me share that with you. And that is, if we could learn to think with our hearts and love with our minds, what a wonderful world we could create.